Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you to all to participate to this new talk in the series of industrial talks sponsored by IEEE Sequence and System Society Chapter Rio Grande do Sul and uh, IEEE Calcio NDA Chapter Brazil, together with Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, also with uh, the support of uh, uh, Brazilian Computer Society and Brazilian Microelectronics Society and the uh, Brazilian Association of uh, Semiconductor Industry. So today we have the pleasure to have here Cesar Duenas from NXP Brazilians. So Cesar Duenas uh, got his uh, uh, bachelor from Unife in Minas Gerais, Brazil. And uh, then uh, he went to Virginia Tech and uh, he has more than 30 years of experience in semiconductor industry. And uh, he starts his career in 1999 as an IC designer and NDA computer system administrator at Vertis Systems Integrados in Campinas, Brazil. Uh, then in uh, 1995, he joined High Tech Electronica. Uh, then uh, Mentor Graphics, that was also Mentor Graphics representative in Brazil. And um, so, uh, in 97, he joined NXP Semiconductor, that was formerly Freescale Semiconductor, and then Motorola in Brazil, all is in Campinas. Uh, and uh, since the beginning of the Brazilian Semiconductor Technology Center in Campinas, as an IC designer and EDA computer system administrator. In 2000, he became a research and development manager responsible for several teams like uh, functional verification, validation, digital analog, IP, until 2018, when he started his current role as NXP Semiconductor Brazil Research and Development Director and Country Manager. So, thank you very much, Cesar, to accept our invitation. Now I give uh, the control to you to start uh, your screen sharing. So you have already the control of the presentation. Mm -hmm. and, um, Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ricardo. And I'm really honored to be invited to this uh, space here. I think it's an excellent initiative to get uh, more uh, visibility to what we do here in Brazil in microelectronics. There's a lot of work going on, right? We have a very good talent here in Brazil. So, my, uh, what I'm going to do is just a, a walk quickly through what uh, a NX, what is NSP worldwide, right, as a company, and then a focus on what we have been doing in Brazil. So starting with a brief history, and uh, then a timeline of technology and projects, right, over these years. Then I'm going to get in a little more detail in the automotive projects we have done in the past and then our current focus that is a, a application processors for industrial and, IO and internet of the things that we are uh, currently doing, okay? So, uh, talking about NSP as a company, okay? Uh, NSP is a global leader in the semiconductor industry, right? With uh, 60 plus years of experience in semiconductors and with operation in more than 30 countries. And uh, let me just put my pointer here, okay. And then uh, three countries, right? We, we are here in, in Brazil, our, our headquarters are in the Netherlands. And uh, to, currently uh, NSP is number one in identification Right, so uh, e-passports and uh, transportation and, and credit cards, right? Uh, then and in automotive electronics and in non-automotive MCUs and RF power, power transi transistors. So it's very likely that a, a good part of the calls that you do with your cell phones go through uh, a, our, our, uh, our chips there in, in, in some way or another. Okay, so uh, we are one of the top 10 semiconductors companies uh, in the world. With, uh, we have a, a large number of customers. We have some large customers, but we, have, we, uh, but, uh, we attend to many, many 
different small uh, customers as well, right? Uh, we have more than 30,000 employees. And from, from those, a third are engineers, right? That have produced more than 9,000 uh, patent families over the years, right? Uh, our company has uh, all the foundational technologies that are key for uh, modern smart devices, right? Internet of Things, right? Uh, so let me. Uh, so for any any uh, smart device, you need to first interact, right, with the environment, but through sense, some kind of sensing and actuation, right? And then you need to have some uh, uh, processing, decision making, and of course connectivity, right? So uh, if NXP has all the technology needed for all of these pillars here, right? And uh, it, besides all this, uh, one thing that is uh, really uh, crucial is that we have safe and secure smart devices, and this is one of the, the, the key skills that uh, NSP brings to the table, right? So, uh, in in the sense, right, we have a technologies like automatic rather, uh, automotive rather than vision, patient gesture recognition, voice recognition, and others, right? Motion, speed, pressure, all kind of sensors. Then we have a, a, a large scalable a portfolio of uh, of processors, right, from 8-bit small parts to very uh, high, po high power, high speed, uh, layer scape network processors, and, and all in the middle, right? We also support many of the uh, most uh, uh, advanced and, and popular uh, uh, communications protocols. Right, and in the and we also have a very advanced power management, battery management and charging uh, for either for uh, smart devices and automotive as well. Right, high speed interfaces in vehicle networks and uh, all kind of uh, analog circuits also to interact with the environment. And uh, on top of that, or uh, at base of that, is we have a very advanced and uh, a workcraft technology for uh, security, right? So encryption and and all, all secure elements, right? And all these uh, components that that uh, help our chips to ensure that uh, we ensure privacy and ensure not uh, avoiding tampering and, and and hackers and that. Okay. Uh, so with this uh, uh, this allows to build systems, full solutions, right, uh, based on the technology. So we, we start with uh, the connectivity uh, uh, protocols, right, then then we combine with our, our uh, MCU, MPU uh, 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 portfolio, right, uh, and then we add all our security uh, technology to serve these four markets here. So we are the markets that we sell are automotive, industrial, and this one IoT, right? Mobile, and communications infrastructure. Okay. So um, yes. So as an example, right, of uh, an uh, uh, an an area a leading area of innovation that uh, that NSP is investing. I can mention ultra wide band, right? This is a very interesting technology that actually uses very narrow pulses to nanosecond pulses, and then it's, it's kind of a, a, a small, rather, rather, so, so it, it, it measures the, the travel time from, for these pulses, right? And it allows you to have a very precise positioning, right? Uh, 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 within five centimeters. Uh, besides it also uh, transmitting data, so this is right now is being developed and, and deployed in automotive as a smart access uh, for a uh, car keys, right? Uh, so um, all major OEMs are already working on this, and we are using this uh, platform as 
uh, based to develop other applications, for example, in, in mobile, in, 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 in all kinds of other applications. So we already have a very nice benchmark here to, to develop this, uh, this new technology, right? Uh, and another uh, example of how we uh, are improving our, our customers' experience uh, is uh, we have a, a fully scalable uh, platform uh, for auto compute, right? It's called S32. Uh, all all our, 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 our uh, MCUs are, are of this family. And uh, the, the key thing is here that we have a, a, a very consistent platform that will have one or other uh, different uh, specialized uh, IP or, or one or more cores and, or non-volatile memory, depending on the application, right? But it ha has a core of ARM uh, uh, compute complex. Uh, is uh, ready for a safe automotive safety, very high and uh, sophisticated security and over the air uh, 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 updates as well, right? So with this, our customers have uh, uh, can reuse the software from one application to the other, right? So they don't need to 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 have this cost of development for each new product. Uh, a much higher performance as well, right? And uh, a very solid and known and, and trusted secure security and safety already built in, okay? Now moving to IoT, so Internet of Things, right? Uh, the focus of NXP is edge processing, okay? So if you take the the uh, the, 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 all the, the, the IoT uh, universe, right? You start with the cloud, right? With huge data centers, right? They behind you, you know, like uh, uh, Amazon, uh, 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 Azure from Microsoft and some and others, right? Uh, and, and, and you can have also private uh, uh, cloud, etc. And uh, we don't, don't uh, it, this is not our focus, right? Our focus is here in the base, going into the, the network computing and the uh, IoT endpoints, so the, the application edge. So this is where you, we will have billions of devices, right? Uh, and this is where we have the right uh, components to really be uh, leaders and, and innovate, innovative leaders here, okay? Uh, so what is, uh, so why the focus on, on the edge, right? The bringing more intelligence to the edge, right, to the, 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 the uh, IoT uh, endpoints, right, uh, it allows you first to avoid latency that you you can, uh, that you need to, to uh, ca uh, capture some data, send it to the cloud to be processed and back to, uh, uh, for, for do, doing anything, right? The other thing is that is safer because you are not uh, transmitting raw data, but actually you are you you can do all the processing there and just send a, a strictly what is necessary through the through the uh, network to the cloud, right? You you reduce the the need for for bandwidth also in the network, right? And also you can uh, have with machine learning, for example, directly in the node. So you can do all kind of stuff really uh, uh, instantly, right, and securely, like detection, classification, for example, right? Uh, so there are many different uh, advantages to actually bring more intelligence to the to the edge, right? That, that is where, where we play, okay? And uh, talking about uh, uh, the machine learning, our focus is on inference, right? And actually, if you see, you, you, you can see the players here, where they play in each of these uh, niches here. So one thing is you have a, 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 a neural network that needs to be trained, and then you have to have a, a very powerful uh, computer, right, to do that, that this costs thousands of dollars, right? Then we can do inference 
in, in high-end systems that, that cost hundreds of dollars. But then our focus is to have actually very specialized uh, uh, machine learning and, and, and artificial intelligence uh, algorithm already trained, ready to use, really uh, very optimized in, in devices that goes to one or tens of dollars at the most, right? This is uh, where our focus is, okay? So, uh, NXP has a, a very scalable edge processing continuum that we call, right? So, we have from very low, uh, low cost and, and, and cost efficient uh, uh, MCUs, microcontrollers, right? Uh, we have, have still have some 8-bit microcontrollers here, but mostly are 32 bits, right? LPC, Kinetis, for example, some, some very, uh, uh, very well-known uh, families there, right? Then we have at the top, we have uh, application processors like Layerscape is our, is our brand for network processors. I don't MX, that is a, a very well-known uh, uh, brand of, uh, of uh, application processors for, uh, for example, for, for e-readers and all kind of multimedia applications for infotainment, right? And then the S32 uh, family that I, I mentioned before for automotive applications. And in the middle, we introduce a new uh, classification for for uh, a processing, right? We call the crossover processors that actually can behave either as MCUs or application processor, depending on 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 the application, right? We have uh, the IDNMX RT family that actually you you can go up to one gigahertz on a microcontroller, right? And uh, I do the, the ultra low power family that uh, actually is an application processor that can is extremely uh, effective for low power applications, right? And this is what I'm going to describe a little more when we talk in, in the activities activities in Brazil. Okay. So talking about NSP in Brazil, okay, just a brief history here. We, we, uh, our, our, we started as Motorola Semiconductors, but Motorola Semiconductors actually started much earlier, even than, than Motorola uh, in, the, in the cellular area. That was when they became a very famous brand here in Brazil, right? But we had their first sales office in, in 67, right? 30 years later, uh, the, 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 the semiconductor uh, sector decided to open a design center here in Brazil. Right, uh, we started with age engineers that we had previous uh, uh, jobs in, in microelectronics, so with a, a team of experienced engineers, right? And then we grew in the next uh, few years exponentially. We doubled, tripled, double. Uh, so we, we uh, went up to, uh, right now we have uh, uh, about more than 100, 140 persons. And we have delivered more than 200 projects, uh, including SOCs and and IPs, right? And uh, in our center, we have uh, teams that work with SOC integration, analog IP, digital IP, functional validation, uh, uh, applications engineering, and enablement software. Enablement software is uh, our, our software for analytics or to to uh, to help also in the in the development process. Okay, and also this uh, team have some uh, basic uh, uh, technology like we in the past we had flash development and currently we have uh, a memory test and repair technology so memory beast and 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 uh, also uh, repair for 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 a embedded a static run uh we have more than 100 uh, granted patents uh, for the team here in brazil so it's very very productive as well okay so here is our, our building, our, our team, uh, a, couple, a couple of years ago. And then uh, here is a timeline, right? Starting in 90, we started in, in December 97, so I practically started in 98, right? And uh, so, and, and we, we were Motorola, we were in Motorola, as part of Motorola, 
since this, the beginning to 2004, when Motorola actually spinned off free scale semiconductors, right? And we had a, a run of around 11 years when we merged with NXP. NXP had a similar uh, story, but they, they, they came actually from Philips, right? They, they, they went into NXP and then we merged uh, in 2015. Okay. But then uh, from the from the start, uh, we started with two different activities, a group doing analog ICs, uh, like 30 plus uh, analog ICs, uh, physical uh, uh, interfaces for, for automotive networking, CAN and LEAN, uh, system-based chips that has a power management and also a physical interfaces, a power management ICs, and uh, ghost drivers as well, okay? Uh, some examples of those are, the first uh, analog IC that was uh, developed here in Brazil was f 60 was a failure monitor for, a, uh, for braking. It was the last line of defense to make sure that if the electronic part of the, of the braking control failed, it reverted safely to the mechanic uh, counterpart, right? And this was so successful that the, after doing this, we started growing, uh, we created a team and started growing from here. All these uh, ships were done in, in smart MOS technology, right? It's a very a, a high power uh, technology developed from Motorola, uh, SPS and Freescale, right? Then another example here is uh, a PMIC, uh, Performance Management IC, that is actually was a multi-ship module where we had all the, the, the control and also the, the, the power transistors in the same package, right? And it, it, this was uh, nominated one of the hot products in 2006 by uh, EDN Magazine. Then the, the, this one is uh, the, the, uh, a lean physical interface. This one was the first lean physical interface in the, in the world, right? Uh, it, it launched it commercially was done here in Brazil. And then this is one of the last chips that we did with for this team. This team was dismantled uh, after this time and uh, was absorbed into the microcontrollers division, right? So this one was a, a system-based chip with high-speed CAN and LEAN, right? It's still a second generation uh, uh, interface that is, is still uh, being commercialized, right? And in parallel, we started developing 8-bit MCUs, microcontrollers, right? We were, there were 30 plus projects from HC08 uh, that were not synthetizable, synthesizable and hcs 08 that were synthetizable, right? Uh, and we also participated in, in the, pro the, the project of the core, the synthesizable 8-bit core at the time, at the beginning of the 2000s, right? Uh, so our first uh, microcontroller was uh, a TB24. This was for closed caption, uh, right? Uh, in, in, in TV sets. We actually, there, it was sold in some, uh, some brands of TVs here in Brazil. Then we, uh, another example was the KTY4. Uh, this one was very successful because it was very low cost, right, and uh, small for 4K of, of flash, and it was the product of the year in the in the electronic products magazine. Uh, then uh, later in the around 2006, we developed the fir, uh, one of the first 8-bit uh, microcontrollers with CAN controller on it, right. So the so eight, uh, DC128, uh, it had 28 uh, kilobytes of flash, right? And one of the, uh, the, there were others, but one of the last 8-bit uh, uh, projects that we did was this one was very, very small, a 16-pin um, microcontroller with only 4 k kilobytes of flash. The, the main challenge for this one actually was testing because we have some, <laughs> 
so a few uh, pins, right, with uh, and a lot of logic here was very interesting and very interesting design. Okay, and all these were if either for for com a commercial product, a consumer products, industrial and automotive as well. Okay. Then, uh, in the beginning of the 2000s, we started to work also in 32-bit MCUs. We started first only on verifications. I, I, I started this verification team, right? We used, uh, started doing verification of, of auto-breaking uh, MCUs, and also some cold fires. Cold fires is the synthetizable version of the 68000, the famous 68000 from Motorola, right? For the industrial market, and then we went all the way to uh, three, uh, automotive uh, power train NCUs, basically mainly uh, based on power architecture. Right, this was the CPU uh, developed uh, together with IBM and Motorola that uh, used to uh, power the first Macintosh after uh, from Apple after after the 68000. Was uh, was the successor of that, right? Uh, for this, uh, yes, for the eight bits, we use uh, CMOS uh, 250 nanometers, and here we started in, in a uh, in a several steps of technology, uh, 103 nanometer, 90 uh, up to 55 nanometers, right? We did eight power trains, uh, operator train microcontrollers, one for AB uh, for for braking and one for body electronics. And in, in all, over these years, right? This one uh, actually was one of the uh, the low end uh, uh, microcontrollers for power train. This one actually was used in the original Uno uh, from 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 Fiat here in Brazil. Okay, it has to use one processor at 80 megahertz. Then this one, I will talk in more detail later about this one and this these two here but this uh, oh, oh, was a 90 nanometers and, and uh, was very high performance right uh, then we went to to a, a dual core uh, a MCU because here we pushed the 90 nanometer technology to the max uh, we you said 264 megahertz is not too much but remember that this works within the, the, the uh, together with the engine, so it is a very harsh environment, right? Very noisy and a high temperature as well, right? Uh, so this one was uh, two cores, and this was two cores, but in 55 nanometers, right? Uh, so it was, uh, was also, a, a, I, I'll, I'm gonna talk a little more in detail about this one later. And then in 2014, uh, uh, the IoT side of the business in NXP was booming, and they needed to have a, a experienced team working on that. So, the CEO decided to move Brazil from auto to to, to IoT, right? Uh, but yes, but before that, uh, one interesting thing that we did at this time was actually to do a, a chip that was a run on the book expansion. That was connected through Cooper pillars in on top of of this uh, the ship. So you have one ship in, on top of the other, but connected directly with Cooper pillars all all in the in the IC fabrication process. And this was uh, to do special parts that was uh, that were used for calibration of the vehicles in the factory. Okay. So uh, when we moved to IoT. We started working with that uh, kind of uh, uh, crossover processes that I, I mentioned, and here we moved to the to a fully depleted is a silicon insulator technology, right? And we so far we have done three projects here: IDMX7 ULP that is already uh, being commercialized, uh, the RT500 that is also uh, starting production, right? Uh, the the interesting thing of this project is that it has also a, a DSP and a large amount of uh, on chip RAM, right? To to do all the algorithms necessary for for several applications with DSP, right? And uh, currently we are working in the next generation of uh, uh, the ultra low power family uh, that we'll uh, talk in more detail later. Okay. So. 
Uh, auto projects. Uh, uh, the, 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 this one, uh, MTC 6774R, uh, was code name was Mamba. Uh, for from we have the code name for uh, snakes, right? So this was we taped out this in 20, 2009, and we had used a single core running at 264 megahertz. We really pushed the the technology to the max here, right? And when we taped it out, it was three times faster than the nearest competitor, right? And the nice thing about this, besides that, is that all the the main IPs that actually build the powertrain solution for the company were uh, developed here in Brazil, right? Uh, so all the time in IO, time in IO subsystem, we have a very fast and, and flexible uh, uh, PWMs, right? Uh, and also we have this this uh, timer called ETPU. ETPU actually is a a microprocessor uh, a, a, with a very wide uh, a word uh, programming here. So uh, you, you can you can do synthesize almost any uh, timing waveform here and also to, to sample events in the motor, right? Uh, we have actually we have actually two uh, uh, ETPUs in this system. We also have a very uh, sophisticated uh, sampling subsystem with uh, uh, ADCs uh, controllers and also a decimation filter to interact with this really to to, to have is all kinds of different uh, measurements right needed for for the application and also uh we had the, the flex can is is our, our can controller we brazil uh, since then became the center of excellence for for the can networking in brazil both from the analog side and from the digital side of the flex can if you remember when we had here uh bernardo colau from silvaco he he, he, he said that Silvaco licenses some third-party IP. Well, FlexScan is one of those IPs that, they're, that, that they license there, as well as our 8-bit uh, uh, CPU that we used in the in the 8-bit microcontrollers. It's also licensed to them, so, so, so other persons can, can use, other companies can use them in their products. Okay, and also the, the Flash controller was developed here in Brazil. Uh, for this one and and uh, several other uh, analog IPs uh, for power management mainly oscillators and, and others okay well this uh, MCU actually was selected by McLaren Electronics that is not the McLaren uh, racing team but the, the, the company right uh, uh, to uh, and actually all Formula One cars in the beginning of the 2010, 11, for, for, uh, in that, that time, used the same uh, uh, powertrain module developed by Mercalli that used this ship that we did in Brazil. I'm not sure if they are still using this one or have upgraded, but for several years we were powering uh, the Formula One cars there. Okay. Also, we had a, a, a title of modern auto product in the hardware category of 2011 with this product, okay? And the evolution of this one, so we have this one here, then we had another one in, uh, with, two, uh, with two CPUs in nine, 90 nanometers, and this, then the, we went to 55 nanometers. And this uh, is an evolution, right? This was called Cobra uh, 55. And uh, besides, having uh, uh, two cores, right, to have more power uh, processing. It had a third core uh, working in lockstep with this one. So it's a delayed lockstep. So they they have a redundancy, right? And, and all, all many other uh, uh, features that allows us to, to have a classification of ACLD for the ISO 26262 uh, safety, uh, automotive safety uh, standard, right? 
So this, uh, at this point in time, we started to, to put safety in all of our, our automotive chips, right? These and other families. And uh, this was, of course, much, uh, uh, it has, this one was three times the performance of the nearest competitor. And this one was two to three times as faster as, as the, this generation here. So, was, well, but only at, uh, and, and because of the new technology, of course, we could uh, reach 300 megahertz on, on, the, on the course. Still power PC here. And then moving into the, the IoT projects. Uh, so what we are currently doing here, uh, we taped out the uh, Dynamics 7 ULP uh, some years ago, and it's already in production, uh, right? We used as FDSOI process technology, heterogeneous architecture, as I will show, and low power mode enablement, right? So we use uh, uh, Cortex A7, application for a, a CPU, and then, then a, a Cortex-M4 for real time, as I will show. But first, talking a little bit about the technology that we use, we have taken full advantage of all the, the goodies that we can find in an, a fully depleted silicon insulator technology, right? Uh, so, uh, very quick, explain what this is. So, uh, the channel here is is pure silicon with not uh, with no doping, right? This is fully that's why it's fully depleted, and we have this ultra thin buried oxide here. Uh, that is the insulator, right? This this allows to have very very low leakage, right? And a lower very uh, lower parasitic capacitance compared to boxy moss, right? And the insulation also allows to uh, have uh, many combinations. For example, you can have an NMOS transistor on an N well, an NMOS transistor on a P well, and, and also for, for, the, for this one. So you, if, if we teach combinations, you can match a, a different profile for higher performance, lower consumption, so on and so forth. And also, it allows a very uh, ample back biasing back body biasing, right, uh, for plus or minus three volts, right, so we, we can uh, polarize the well here. Uh, with this, we can uh, dynamically, during the operation of, uh, of the, of, on the field, we can uh, tune the, the, the processor for high performance or for lower, or for lower leakage, depending on the application profile that we, we need at that time. Besides that, also, uh, this also has um, a, a much higher immunity to solve errors than Bolsimos. So there are many advantages. So for this product here, as you can see here in the press release, we go uh, down to 15 microwatts or even less in, in the lowest power uh, uh, modes, right? So that it's, this is 17 times better than the, the previous a, a low power uh, IDNMX7 devices that was in another technology, not in book technology, not in FDSOI, right? And also in dynamic uh, dynamic uh, uh, power, we had a, a very good advantage, okay? So what's the, why heterogeneous uh, computing, right? The, the idea is that we have a, an application domain that runs Linux, right? And has all the high performance peripherals. And then we have a real-time domain with the Cortex-M4 that have the low power peripherals and, and a real-time OS, right? And they, sh they can share resources, they can talk to each other, and share memory, uh, right? But still, you can, uh, you can uh, completely switch off this application, this application domain while the real-time domain is, is working. So they are completely independent. So gives, this gives us a lot of flexibility, right? So, uh, for example, uh, we normally have uh, the, the Cortex-M4 as a boot processor, right? And, uh, and the application uh, core can boot on demand, right? We have independent voltage range for each. So, so as I said, we can uh, power one or the other as, as needed. And also independent resets, right? 
And we have a very flexible power mode combination for each domain, so we can do all kinds of trade-offs between performance and power uh, to fit an application. And uh, besides that, we also developed very, very key uh, IP for this here in Brazil, like all the power management systems and the memory beast, as I mentioned before, right? Uh, and, the, and this is an example of mission profile, uh, how this uh, kind of uh, crossover process would be used, right? So uh, this is time, and uh, the, the, the pink, the, the uh, orange, uh, 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 marks here are when the, the real-time domain is, is on and working, and the blue ones is when the Cortex A7 is, is waked up and, and energized and working, right? So, so normally you could have, uh, for example, a, a thermostat, and a smart thermostat that will, will be always in, in a very low power, and then from time to time it will, will cap just to measure the, the, the temperature, see if there is anything else to, to be done, or even control the, 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 the air conditioning, right? But then, for example, when it detects that you, he needs, uh, the, the, the thermostat needs to, to display all the interface, the user interface to interact, then it can wake up the, the application domain, right? And then go back to sleep. Another application that could fit this profile is a smart speaker. Right, that, that, that the ones that all all the big uh, uh, companies like uh, Apple, Amazon, Google have, right? So, uh, for ex here we could have uh, 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 the, the the real time domain checking for for activity, and when it detects the text that there is a human voice uh, being being uh, listened, right? It can. Uh, Identify if it's if, if it's a if it's a command, and then if it, if it is, then it wake caps the the application domain, so the voice processing can kick in, right? Uh, just a couple of examples here on how this would work. So with uh, and also with a smartwatch and all kind of wearables, uh, this is very uh, the, the kind of application that we're looking for. Okay. So. And uh, besides that, and this is my last slide, okay, uh, right now we are working in the next generation of this uh, uh, ultra low power uh, processor, right? What we have done now, we have two cores instead of one for the application domain, so much more power. Uh, it's, a, it's an A35 class, so it's lower power than the, the A7, and, and it's a lower consumption and higher power, uh, computing power, right? And the same, we, we went to a Cortex M33 here, for a real-time domain, but also we separated a, 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 a low-power audio-video domain here. Uh, all, the, uh, the, all the part, all the multimedia was handled here in the, in the application domain. Now we have this domain that can be controlled by either or even standalone in some cases, right? So we have much more uh, refined control on consumption. And besides that, all the security that was already very uh, uh, sophisticated here, we have increased the, all the security with uh, the new, new class of security processors, coprocessors here uh, for MSP, and also compatible with Microsoft Azure Sphere uh, standard, right? And this has been already announced in, in, in the media about the development of this part. We are collaborating with them, right? So we have all the all the multimedia here that can be a controlled with either of the parts. We have a much more sophisticated and refined uh, power management scheme. We have more than 17 power switches, so we can uh, power up, power up or power down uh, with a lot of granularity here. Or each of the some of the big peripherals and, and each of the domains uh, and so on and so forth. So I, I cannot uh, go much in detail on, on this product, of course, but uh, you soon will hear about this. Okay. So this is uh, this was an over a quick overview of what kind of activities we do here in in Brazil in the Brazil Semiconductor Technology Center. Okay. We I think we're we're very satisfied with uh, the world-class talent that we have here in Brazil. 
that allows to, uh, us to work in this kind of product. So it's, uh, I, uh, I think we, we are uh, one of the uh, main development centers of NSP uh, worldwide, right? Uh, so we are working in, in uh, state-of-the-art technology. So, and it's very, we, this is very satisfying and, and we have very, very good um, challenges here. Okay, so I want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, to talk with you and uh, talk about a little about our work, and I'm uh, open to to questions that you may have. Thank you. So thank you very much, Cesar. So I have uh, a first question of uh, by Professor uh, Jacob Swart. Mm -hmm. So NXP is a fab light company, correct? Which is the most advanced node in house? What percentage of chips are produced in house? Okay, hello, Jacob. Thank you for your question. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is uh, 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 this is classified information. <laughs> I cannot uh, give any any numbers here. But yes, the, we are uh, you are fab light. We have our own fabs, but uh, for the, these most advanced nodes uh, uh, are all outsourced. We have more specialized uh, uh, technologies today uh, are more towards analog, uh, for example, high power, right for uh, for automotive and that. And uh, but uh, the, all the the, the 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 smaller nodes like uh, the DCFTSOI. Uh, at FinFET, we have uh, 16 FinFET, 14 FinFET, and now we recently announced that we are starting working on this with fine nanometer in FinFET as well. This will be our next uh, node for, 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 for new products. We already, there is already teams working on that. Those, all, all of those are, are outsourced. Sorry to not, not uh, I cannot share any more than that. <laughs> we have another question by Berlitz. What exactly is called ultra low power on this concept? Sub microwatt or sub milliwatt? Micro. So we, we, we go, ah, yes, one thing I, I forgot to say, say is that the, the new generation that we are using actually is, has double the size of the previous generation of the semi ULP and has this uh, around the same, uh, as a little uh, smaller consumption. And and we so we can get, get down to to as I said 15 microwatts in the low power modes right as I of course we have a lot of computing power we have GPUs we have DSPs we have display controllers and the 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 thing is that we can wake up very quickly do whatever we need to do and go back to a very low power mode right and only turn on the power on whatever is needed specifically for that application. Besides that, with uh, back bias, uh, right, uh, we, we can play, play all kind of tricks to make the, the transistors to, to act faster or uh, to actually uh, have lower leakage. We can also uh, dynamically uh, act on, on the voltage, uh, right? So we, we can lower and, and, and hour up the voltage as needed right uh, and so on so with all these advanced uh, power management techniques we can really uh, uh, put the, the chip in the optimal state for whatever uh, activities are are needed at that very moment and on the next moment they can go to a very low power state thank you we have another question by juan pablo brito from mm -hmm. satec thanks for the great talk I'd like to know Thank if you. you can talk about uh, the acquisition of NXP by Qualcomm. <laughs> can you Certainly. say something about it? Yes, the, uh, this was a very big deal for, for uh, almost more, more than a year, a year and a half. But uh, it didn't went through because uh, it, it, you know that all the big, uh, large uh, countries, uh, main countries need to approve that. And because of this lack of one of the approvals, it didn't went through. So at, that, at some point in time, they say, okay, that is no, no we, we won't go through with that. 
Uh, so we, we continued as separate companies. Yeah, Qualcomm is an excellent company, and uh, we are a formidable competitor. We and uh, yeah, we respect a lot each other, and uh, we have some uh, collaborations with them as well. Thank you. So I have one confirmation. So uh, you told in your slides that uh, the Formula One cars are using a chip design in Brazil. Correct. Right. That's correct. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, few people know in Brazil that uh, <laughs> we are doing that. Uh -huh. So you, you should do more publicity of this. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So we have uh, also now a question by Professor uh, Altamiro Suzin. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, thank you for the presentation. In the devices for IoT, you presented mostly digital center system. Do you, your solutions for the many, do you, uh, do you do solutions for the many interfaces to the real world? Certainly, yes. We, we have uh, many uh, physical layers within the ship, and we have uh, a, a very large uh, assortment of analog chips as well. Uh, that doing by other groups in the in the company. So the, the PIVIC, for example, uh, is external. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, all sorts of, 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 of analog chips to, to, to go together with this. Uh, but inside the chip, we have a lot of physical interfaces for, for display control, for audio, for video, for, uh, I mean, uh, networking, right? And I think the most, I would say that the most advanced analog technology we have in our ships is the power management, because this is the secret sauce of this, of this uh, ultra low power uh, crossover processors. Okay. So uh, thank, you. thank you, Professor Susi. Uh, a question by Max Vasconcelos. I think he liked your talk a lot because he's asking if he uh, does NXP have an internship program? Yes, we do. And we, we, are, we have had many, uh, several uh, interns from, from, from Unipay. <laughs> so, and we very much like it. Yeah, we have, I mean, we have had interns or, or uh, from many of the fine universities like, uh, uh, I mean, I, I won't name maybe all of them, but of course, São Paulo is, is near. We have from Rio Grande do Sul, but from all, all over, uh, 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 Pernambuco, uh, there is talent all over. That, that's one thing I, I learned very early when we were working with uh, Motorola at the time. Uh, uh, for the first uh, maybe five years, most of the persons that we hired were from other states, not from São Paulo. That was the obvious choice, right? So we we had people from all over. And the case, yes, but yes, we do. But however, because of this, the 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 situation we are dealing with COVID, this is kind of uncertain. Uh, so we are still waiting to to get a more normal situations to to restart and continue our, our internship program. Hey, thank you. So another question by Berlitz. Uh, how is the cooperation between NXP Brazil and uh, the other centers offices around the world, uh, mainly in Europe? Ah, I mean, you mean the, within NSP? It's it's a uh, daily <laughs> daily interaction, <laughs> right? This this kind of this size of of uh, project is hardly uh, fits just one one site, right? We, we, with this one we're doing now, we had at least five sites involved in different things, right? Because uh, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's very, very complex. And uh, so we need a, a lot of people from all, all over. Okay. A, we, we, we interact on a daily basis, yeah. Okay, I have also a question about the, you told that you are using um, 28 nanometer FDSUI. Yes. So it's the same process as SCT in France, or same foundry you are using, or it's it's it's, uh, it's, it's the same origin, but it's, it's from Samsung. From Samsung, but yep. compatible. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. So there is some uh, congratulations for you. Uh, Thank you. Thank also, you. Juan Pablo is saying long life for NXP Brazil. So it's uh, for, uh, we are very proud to have uh, your team uh, designing chips in Brazil for the whole world. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was very nice to know that you are also doing this for Formula One cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for your uh, talk today. It was very, very, very interesting. So thank you very much for accepting our invitation. So uh, then thank you all again. Thank to all the attendees. Uh, that saw this very nice talk of uh, Cesar today. And thank you again, Cesar, to to give uh, this talk uh, for all us. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Good and congratulations for the initiative. Very really good. Thanks. Then a good evening for everybody.